everyone, this is Vicki from Musty Table Studio. I forgot to do a video over the weekend for editing on Monday and publication on Tuesday because I was so involved in knitting. <laughs> um, when the weather gets a little cooler here, that's when I go into full tilt with knitting and dabbling in crochet. Mostly I'm a knitter. Um, so I want to show you what I've been working on. For those of you who are interested in books, I swear I'll go back to books, but right now Texas weather has cooled off about 10, 15 degrees, so it makes it more tolerable. Plus I don't do projects where I have to sit them on my lap right away. So that comes like in January, February. All right, so um, while digging through a bin that had old unfinished projects in it, UFOs, unfinished objects, I found this magazine from 2011 called Knitting Today, and right on the cover there is a knit beret or some kind of a knit hat. They're calling it beret. And I thought, wow, that would be really cool. So I opened it up to find the directions. There's uh, 56 rows, and I'm on row 32 for the fourth time. Now I've ripped this out and re-knit it, and ripped it out, and re-knit it, and ripped it out, and re-knit it, and now I'm re-knitting again. The reason is because of the needle sizes. This called for a size 10 needles, and I was like, whoa, those are big, but okay. I'm used to doing socks, so I'm used to, you know, very tight. This is like, yeehaw, it's all over the place. So it's, it makes my hands hurt. If I do too many hours of the big needles, I, and it's so silly, should be more relaxing with the big ones because you don't have to grip, not for me. Um, so anyway, I'm on th row 32, and I've been trying to slide down this piece of um, board every row to make sure I get my count right, and I stop and I count every row because a couple times I had to rip it out because I had either too many stitches are not enough and you need the exact amount of stitches because this is um, very exact how it makes purl stitches. It wants to expand this inside part with the purls. So when you add stitches, you better add them in the right place. So that was part of the problem. Then I had to teach my, uh, first I had to teach myself how to do knitted bobbles, which I have to say, did not thrill me at all. I do not enjoy making these. It takes so long and it takes a ton of yarn. This was a uh, either a five or six ounce skein and I'm on row 32 out of 56 and we might be paying yarn chicken. So um, this is called, what is this? It's tweed. I thought I had the paper with me. Do I have it with me? No, it's it's a tweed. I don't know if I'll ever wear it or not, but I just thought it would be a challenge. I haven't knit anything besides socks or baby blankets in a while, so I tried something different. It's going okay. Anyway, so it started with 10 needles, and I put it over my head, and the whole thing flew over my head like a cowl. I'm like, no, no, this is supposed to be a hat. So I did not have size nine needles, so I had to order those and wait for those to come from Amazon. Meanwhile, I ripped it all out and started, tried to start it again, but I had to wait for the nines to get here. So I waited, they came, I knit and hated it. It was still kind of wonky. Well, then I went down to an eight and wait, eight was very tight on my head. The ribbing was so small with an eight that it, I could barely get it on my head and I thought, my head's not that big. So, back to the nines. So this time I started with nines and somewhere I think in this area in here, I bumped it up to the nines so that it would, it would look saggy in the back like it's supposed to. It's supposed to fit nice and snug around here and then sag in the back. So this has been going on, I don't know, since 1910. I mean, it just... You know, I, I want it to work, and I'm trying to teach myself how to do different things, and it's, sometimes it's like beating my head up against a brick wall, but I am determined to finish this. So that's that. Let me go get the other projects. I forgot to put them on the desk before I started. All right, for project number two, I'm 
I love knitting socks. It's my favorite thing to do because it's small and it works in the winter, summer, spring, fall. No season is exempt from great looking socks. You don't have to wear them all year, but you know, they're easy to do. And you can pram, cram them in your purse, a very small project bag, and take them with you. So I have a ton of sock yarn and I decided this year I was going to try to knit it down. So far it has gone slowly because I've got four, now I'm down to three UFO, UFOs and I'm slowly getting through them. All right, so this is the Vanilla Socks on DPNs by Kay Litton. And if you don't understand any of it, she does have a YouTube channel that's in blue. I bought this pattern last year, year before last, when she had a sale 50% off of her, on her patterns. I think I bought five. So this is the like a beginner sort of thing, but I like doing vanilla socks. I love DPNs, so I got the pattern. Alrighty, so here it is. I cannot tell you what yarn this is because I have lost the ball band. It's been sitting in a, a container with lots of other socks, but most of them have the ball bands. Unfortunately, this one does not. All right, why is it? Oh, because of this. I got these all mixed up in my yarn bowl here that was gifted to me that I really love. Because when I go from room to room, all I just do is put everything in there and just pick up and move. And it doesn't slide off the table, so that's another good thing, because I have a cat. All right, so here is sock number two. And there's three needles in there because this is going to be the heel flap right here. This is the needle that has 36 stitches on it. I do 72 stitches on two point, let's see. This was 2.0, the cuff one and one, and one was 2.5 millimeter. The body, this is so stupid. Uh, I messed up. The body is a combination of needles 2.25 and 2.25 and 2.5. I forgot to take out some of the needles and put them in and thought, oh, well, it'll be fine. So what I did was, I did, I messed up on the first sock, so I thought, well, I got to repeat the same mistake. Except for I can't remember how many of the needles, because I use five, I don't remember how many needles were a a smaller size so I took a couple mixed them in and so it's a combination of whatever I'm stitching that's 2.25 and 2.50 and they turn they look fine there's not any problem with that I'm just wondering how they're gonna fit so this is the first sock and I've started the heel flap I think I have six more of these to do there's got to be a total of 18 rows so that means there'll be 36 of these knit stitches. Or you can flip it on the back and go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, what? Just count 18 of these. All right, so that's that. The leg of the sock is 70 stitches, and I each one of these bulbs stands for 10. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And I didn't bother using a bulb pin for the last one because that's 10 stitches to where I have started the heel flap. I was going to do the um, afterthought heel, but I decided to go ahead and use this to see how well it'll work with this kind of yarn, whatever it is. It's very stretchy. And I know it has some wool in it because it's not like soft like baby stuff, but it's not super scratchy. All right, so I have that and that going on. And I, I knit these under an ot light because my eyes just can't take the dark color. And there's a lot of, this is like a, it looks bluish on here, but it's a dark purple. And it's hard to see. So if it's sunshine in here in the art room, then I'll knit on for a little while. But mostly I go out at night when I watch TV with my husband and I knit under the ot light because I can't see it any other way. Okay, so that's this project. So that's two, and let's see, the next one. Um, Becky from Aunt Beck Creation made a pattern for a hat, and I am not a crocheter, but I did manage to finish the hat that she created. I may have put one extra row in here somewhere, but I am done with it. So I'm very happy I finished it. I told him I'm no quitter. 
I may whine the whole time, but I am not a quitter. And then there's this little bow, this little, well, I don't know what you call it. Um, it it's woven in between some of these stitches. See, it's woven in between some of these and then just tied on the corner for like, you know, an accessory of some sort. So you can take that out and it, the hat still wears just fine. So I haven't crocheted a hat like this ever, ever. <laughs> so I was very proud of myself for finishing. It only took like four or five tries, but hey, I finished. So there's that. Then um, I, at Becky and Aunt Beck's Creations, posted a stitch called the pebble stitch and I was like oh, that's perfect for all these baby afghans I've been knitting of course this is crochet and I've I have ripped this thing out numerous times because I've had problems I don't understand the edges and I do want my edges to not be wonky I want them to look right and I have started this like a million times um, first the amount of stitches I have, it's a two plus two. The amount of stitches I started with, because I my blanket cannot be larger than 32 inches by 32 inches. So I did 120. And when I did the first foundation row, the foundation row in the first set of bobbles, I was like, oh my God, this thing is like 10 feet long. <laughs> so I ripped it out, started again. This time I did 100 stitches. I took 20 out. Of the original chain, recrocheted it, and I looked at it and went, This looks wonky. So I ripped it out again and hung with the 120, crocheted it again. <laughs> and then I was like, Yeah, it's still too long. So then I ripped it out again and I did 80 stitches. So I've ripped out 80 stitches two or three times because I could not line up the bobbles properly. And even now, I have no idea if I'm doing this properly. This one doesn't look as puffy as the rest, but I'm not ripping it out again. So this is it. And this is Baby... That's It's from Joann's. It's called Baby Soft. It's Lion Brand. This is not the color that I bought. This is... Um, is this the color I bought? No, this is a, a green one that I finished another baby afghan with but it's the same brand so there's that it's baby soft by lion brand and i got it when um joann's was having a honking sale on 30 percent off a of yarn and i went through and i bought some yarn <laughs> that's all i'm going to say i don't know if i've shown you guys this thing but i love it now it looks a little disorganized now because i have ripped out um I ripped out my uh, baby blanket again uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, and I didn't bother balling it all back up. I had this in a cake, and from taking it out, putting it in, and taking it out, putting it in, it just destroyed the cake. So I got so aggravated that I was having to rip this out so many times because I didn't understand. Um, I just plunked it down on there and said, poo, I'm done. <laughs> so it's a cakeish thing. <laughs> and it pulls off right nice. You just, you know. And it's a double, so I think I may have showed you this. There's two of these. So if you're doing color knitting, you can have one here and one there and pull. I think it's a great invention. But I'm not doing colors. I just left this here like this, put this on here with my, um, holding my stitch markers and um, all that stuff and I just left it on here like this it's a good thing because it I needed something for my stitch count and every time I would try to find something I'm like I have to go back in the other room and I got tired of doing it so when I put it on here I said ah, this is the best use for this because I don't have to go back into the other room I got some in here some in the living room and this is the way it's going to be because I'm tired of going back and forth <laughs> Um, let's see. I think that's it for the knitting and crocheting. I am not a prolific crocheter, although I'm getting better, but I'm not prolific like a lot of, uh, like some of the people that I, I know. I'm, I'm mainly a knitter and 
I doubt that will ever change, but I would like to be able to crochet stuff when I see a pattern that I think will work. Um, let me go get the baby blankets and show you those that I finished already for this year. All right, so I knit this one here. And I don't know, if the, I think the ends are already in this one. So there's this baby blanket. So that one's ready to go. All these have to be washed. And yep, some of these that I've done already have to be washed and they need to have the ends. Um, that's coffee. <laughs> so I have to get that out of there. So here's this one. That's knit. And this one is very heavy because I held two uh, fingering weights of yarn at the same time. I was knitting a DK white with yellow fingering. So I had to double up my fingering and it made a huge blanket. And the thing is, it's got, you can't tell it from this, but it's got gradiated white and yellow colors in it because this was all leftover yarn. The yellow yarn is from Tess, Tess's. Uh, they're based out of Maine and I've been using their yarn for years and I love their yarns. They come in, yeah, I guess you call it a hank. It's not in a ball or a skein per se, but comes kind of like in a hank. Um, and so I use the yellow that I've had. I've had that yellow hank since I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool when we lived back on the East Coast. And I decided I needed to use up that yarn. So I whipped it into here. And this one's just stockinette and garter stitch. There's nothing, you know, it was just a mind number for me to knit this at night while I watch TV. So there's this one. And I, like I said, they all have to have, most of them have to have their ends woven in and they have to, um, be washed and dried. Then the one that I finished recently is this one. Now this is that baby soft, yarn, baby soft yarn from Joann's and this is the green label that I looked at earlier, Sweet Pea by Lion Brand. They had them on sale so I did buy another color because I don't want to make baby blankets that are all pink and, pink and blue because people don't like pink and blue. So I did this one in green and white and it's stockinette garter and no stockin stockinette yeah stockinette and seed stitch mostly I do seed stitch for the edges so they don't curl up because if you do too short of an edge you know it kind of rolls so that's that so I've done four baby afghans this year and as soon as I wash them and I do the ends and put them in the wash then they will go in a box and they will be mailed to I think Millington, uh, I don't know what they call it anymore. When we lived there, it was Millington Naval Air Station. I don't know if they call it that anymore. Um, it's kind of changed what the military has the base for. But I know that Navy Wives Club in Millington was asking for people to knit things for MWR, which is Morale, Welfare, and Rec. They put these in... Um, packets for young mothers that had their first baby or had a baby, I guess, at the, at, you know, first time mom sort of thing. And they were asking for people to do blankets. And so I've done four and I'm, I'm very happy to send these on their way to some young mother who would love to have a baby Afghan. And this is the right time of year because some of these are kind of warm. This one is the heaviest one of the group, like I said, because it's double finger and it's a DK weight. These others are DK weights, but that's it. There's just one thing of DK weight. Um, and then this baby afghan here, you know, the one that's on the wheel, this is also one strand of DK weight. So it makes it weigh a whole lot less than this yellow one. This yellow one is for somebody who lives in Alaska. <laughs> so that'll give me five baby afghans to send. And yes, I know there's a lot of blue in here, and I don't have any pink. Um... I have a bunch of baby yarn in the closet, but it's all very the very finger weight stuff. So I have to, I have to hold it double, and then I have like balls like this, and then maybe a ball like that, and then I run out, and so then I end up going to Joann's to buy more yarn, which defeats the purpose of me trying to finish this stuff. So that's where my situation is. 
at the current moment. So I thought I would share that with you. I have not made any books or done any artsy fartsy stuff in a while. I have been doing some Inktober's and Tangle stuff. I'm not really thrilled with the prompts, but I'm trying to hang in there to finish a book that I started in 2009, which I've shown you guys in a previous video. I mean, 2019, sorry, geez. Anyway, so that's it. That's my update. Uh, the next video might be of a place called Cedar Chest, or I might try to do two videos one week. We'll see how it goes. Editing videos within a video is kind of annoying, but I, and I'll have to put music to it because we were in a uh, flea, flea market, antique market, and there were lots of people around us talking, so on and so forth. So I couldn't give any commentary to anything because there were people talking behind me looking at stuff. And so I'll just try to do a voiceover and put music to it. It's just very interesting, the things that I found in there. I left not spending one dime in there. So when we got to McGregor, I saw the sign for Waco, and I said, how's about we drive to Waco and I go to Joanne's? Oh, big mistake. <laughs> I had to go to Joanne's because I didn't have enough green to finish this. I had enough white, but I needed another skein of green. So now I have the skein of green somewhere that's not big enough to finish anything, baby yarn, DK. And I'm like, well, poo, this defeats the whole purpose of me doing this. <laughs> you know, it just happens. All right, so that's my status. So that's what I've been doing. Um, the weather not, has gotten a little cooler here. So I went out to the garage and I've been cutting um, projects for Artemat. I tried to get all my cutting at, of the wood in the fall and winter months and then live off of what I've made in the summer months because that garage is like 120 degrees and I just can't sit out there and cut stuff up in that burning garage. So I try to cut all my all my inventory up in, in standard sizes so that I have them when I want them and all I have to do is glue them and paint them. So I'm prepping for, um, I guess, late fall, which is like now, uh, and in the spring. Probably starting in November, January. November, December, probably won't start till January. Um, I did it for a year with no break, and so I'm taking a break, and I'm going to knit for a little while. And once I get mo this stuff in the mail and get this other these other UFOs done, I will finish a 16-year-old UFO, a sweater that all I need to do is just knit in the round to finish the arm, the cuff, and it's done. I don't know what has taken me so long. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. I don't know. All right, everybody, that's it for me for today. Thank you for stopping by. I know a lot of you guys don't care about knitting and crocheting, but I really do enjoy it when I'm not doing other stuff. It, it's very satisfying to make something and give it away that brings somebody else some joy. I don't keep the majority of this stuff because, like, I have no babies. Um, I don't wear a lot of hats. I do, however, wear those socks. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.